the most important application of what we've been studying so far is related to the probability of finding an electron in a certain location of an atom. That probability is proportional to, this is the letter psi, so this is proportional to psi squared. Psi is called the wave function, and the wave function is a complicated mathematical function that we're not going to go into in this class, but we are going to look at the variables that go into that function. The first variable is called the principal quantum number. Now, it's more important that you remember the abbreviation, and that's a lowercase n. The rule is n can be any positive whole number, so you need to remember n and the rules for n. Positive whole number starting at 1 and going all the way up to infinity. The second variable is called L and the rule for L is it starts at 0 and the maximum it can be is 1 less than the value of n. So the quantum number L is determined by what the quantum number n is. That's going to limit your choices for L. The quantum number M sub L is dependent on L. It ranges from negative L up to zero up to positive L in integer increments. The last variable is called the spin quantum number M sub S and this can either be plus one half or minus one half. So the rules for the quantum numbers, it's important that you memorize these rules. You can see an example. Let's say that n is equal to 4. That fits the rules because it's between 1 and infinity and it's a whole number. But once we determine the value of n, that limits the choices for L. In this example, L could be 0, 1, 2, or 3. It's not all of those numbers, it's going to be one of those numbers. And depending on which number it is, we have different values for m sub L. So for example, when L is 0, m sub L has only one possibility between negative 0, 0, all the way up to positive 0. The only answer that works is 0. But if we take the upper extreme when L is 3, m sub L can be any of these values. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2, or plus 3. The spin is always either plus 1 half or minus 1 half. Altogether, those four quantum numbers make up a set, and no two electrons in an atom can have that same set of four quantum numbers. So if you're looking at an atom with 80 electrons, all 80 electrons have a unique set of four quantum numbers. They may have three of the four the same, but they must have the fourth quantum number different. The quantum numbers tell you about the orbitals, and the orbitals are the location of electrons. So the quantum number n tells you, most importantly, about the energy of the orbital. And it's going to turn out to also be dependent on L. So the energy is not just dependent on n, but it's also dependent on the quantum number L. The most important thing L tells you, though, is the shape of the orbital. And the quantum number M sub L tells you about the orientation in three-dimensional space about that orbital. This code is vital that you memorize the orbital name that goes along with the quantum number L. So 0, 1, 2, and 3 matches S, P, D, and F. The quantum number L is 0 is an S orbital. That's the name of the orbital. And the S orbital has a spherical shape. 
a p orbital has a quantum number l is equal to 1 and that has a dumbbell shape. d orbital looks like two p orbitals stuck together. That's one possibility. Or it could look like a p orbital that has a donut shape around the middle. And the quantum number 3 that goes with an f orbital, those shapes are more complicated than the d's, so you only have to worry about the shapes for s, p, and d orbitals.